so I don't know if you can see this poster here with my face, my name, and then first prize right there. But I am a winner. This is not a, a made up sign. This is like a legitimate real life sign that I did not go to a print shop to make, I promise. I entered a contest where you had to write a story based on a broken social scene song. Guess who won? First prize. That's me. Um, there's now a really cool book out with the top 13 stories in it. I would suggest that you purchase it. It's an ebook, way of the future, might I say. Um, the link is below, so check it out if you're interested. I I would highly recommend it. If you're feeling like less of a winner right now, because I am a first prize winner and you're a little bit jealous, no need to worry. Don't worry about it at all, because here's a prize for everyone. It is part three of the Suset Suspense. Suspenseful story, the thing that looks like a baby. You can read part one here, part two here. So, so magic, so magic. I'm so good at everything. Um, and if you need a little refresher, our main character, who doesn't have a name, is about to go take the thing that looks like a baby back to the fountain where he found it. There was someone at the fountain. I thought she was underwater, but it was just her reflection. Her hand was in the water. I kept my head down and sat away from the woman. I felt pebbles through my pants. I would wait for the woman to leave. The thing that looked like a baby was still in my bag. It was April and it was colder than I remember it being the April before. Tick, tick, tick. You came back, the woman said. The woman at the fountain was the woman from before, the one with the Russian book and the curve in her lips. There was that YouTube video of that guy from Russia, naked and dancing, and I wondered if that woman had seen it. I wanted to fall in love with the woman. What are you doing here, I asked. I wanted to see if you'd come back. What do you know about all this? I wanted to see. She might have had an accent. Tick, tick, tick. The woman got up and walked towards the street. Her long coat hit against her legs like in a film noir. Hey, I yelled, come back. Tick, tick, tick. I started to follow, but she ran. Her high heels didn't get stuck in the mud. I ran too, but my bag with a thing that wasn't a baby banged against my legs. I want to talk to you, I called. But she was already at the street. A bus drove by and she got on. Tick, tick, tick. At the doctor's office, the doctor had said to get plenty of rest and drink clear fluids. I was better now. I went back to the fountain and pulled the thing that looked like a baby from my bag and held it. I thought for a second that it was warm, but it wasn't. I slid it into, a wa into the water. It was the only thing I could think to do. It sank. I reached my hand all the way into the water. I sat, holding the baby with my hand in the water. A wet leaf stuck to my elbow. Tick, tick, tick. I couldn't let the thing go just then. The yellow light from the park lamp. In the yellow light from the park lamp, the thing that looked like a baby looked like it needed me. My arm ached with the cold. When I was 14, I wanted to be an underwater welder. I let the baby roll out of my hand and onto the cracked tile at the bottom of the fountain. The ticking in my head stopped. I walked the perimeter of the park, alone, feeling twice as alone, as though someone had taken the world away and then taken it away again. I couldn't even hear my footsteps. I started to run. I ran around and around the perimeter of the park until I was afraid my shoes would fall off my feet and my feet would fall off my legs. My lungs hurt and I was afraid I was getting sick again. I went back to the fountain just to see, and the baby was still there. It was still at the bottom looking just the same. The woman was nowhere, and I had a feeling she'd be impossible to find. So that was the stunning conclusion to the thing that looked like a baby. Thank you very much for watching.